Now, if you want to be attractive and irresistible to women, you have to wake up to reality. There are certain traits that you need to possess to become a high value man and really to set you apart from the rest of the pack. Now, women's opinion on what makes a man attractive is not that important in that case. They might say things like, I need a guy who's over six foot, he needs to make that much money and so on. But really, once a truly high value man enters the room, they just can't help themselves being attracted to him. So it's not really about your looks. I mean, sure, don't dress like a bum, you know, look good, take care of yourself, but looks don't matter as much as women portray it to be. Obviously, they're a bit in their own head because for women, yes, looks matter a lot more than for men, so that might be the opinion they communicate, but don't fall into that too much. Women are really more attracted to stuff like drive and ambition. So let's jump into it. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the four high value traits that you need to become irresistible and attractive to the women that you desire. Number one, bravery. Now, bravery is not surprising. We've seen it in movies all the time. A guy who's brave, no matter if it's like a superhero or a war hero or somebody who's just helping out an old lady, that's always a positive attribute, right? And we can put that bravery into the context of meeting women, of approaching women on the street. Problem is a lot of guys think it's harassment, it's annoying girls, it's uh, taking girls time, it's bothering them, it's stopping them from what they're doing and so on. They have a lot of negative mindsets around that thing without having really proof of how that looks like in reality. But what if the opposite is true? What if women actually want to be approached? In my experience as a coach and doing thousands of approaches myself on top of listening in and observing thousands more approaches with my students, I know for a fact, statistically proven, that women love being approached the right way. Of course, if you approach 100 women, will you run into some girls who say, I'm busy, I have a boyfriend, or, uh, or you know, they cringe a bit and maybe they feel your cringe and so they cringe back. Hello. Hi. I don't, I'm not going to sell you anything. You're just very beautiful. Where are you from? Okay, bye. Bruh. Of course, right? That will always happen. Some women are already taken. Some women are just not interested. Maybe some women are a bit in a bad mood that day, but those are not the ones we're out for. We're out for the ones who want to be approached, who are generally open and who respect the fact that you walked up to them and gave them a, you know, direct, open, beautiful compliment. I, you just came from Metro. You look so cool. Thanks. Yes. You look awesome. Oh, Amazing. Thank so you. sexy. <laughs> Hi. Sorry. You look so cool. And you had the most energetic walk I've seen all day. Thank you. They really appreciate that side of you. They see that as bravery and then continue the conversation with you. Those are the ones that we're doing this for. And again, there's many out there like that. They know it's hard, they appreciate it. And with them, you will have a beautiful conversation, maybe get the number, maybe go on a date and so on. Number two is dealing with pressure. And this is kind of the secret weapon of an introvert. So if you describe yourself more on the introverted side, then you should pay attention now. Of course, when we talk about holding pressure in a social context, what I'm not talking about is at a party, for example, just sitting at the corner of the room and like holding pressure means like not talking to anyone. Uh, you know, that doesn't help anyone. I mean, being an introvert, overcoming that kind of like barrier of uh, approaching, doing it anyway, engaging a conversation and then being able to hold back, then being able to pause, to know when to talk, when not to talk, to know when to apply certain levels of pressure onto the woman in this case, you know, maybe challenging her, maybe just looking in her eyes flirtatious and knowing what to say at what point of time. Because in my experience, even though I have coached a lot of introverted guys, very analytical guys, very engineers, financial analysts, and so on, like people who, you know, use their brain a lot and they overanalyze stuff and they're usually more reserved and they're thinking stuff through. As soon as you put them in front of a girl, suddenly they become extroverted in a bad way. <laughs> they, they move a lot, they fiddle, they interrupt her, they jump in, they talk too much, they don't know what to say, when to say, they suddenly start giggling in a weird way, they're looking away, they have nervous eye contact and so on. Why is that? Obviously they're putting a lot of value on making a good impression which, make, which makes them nervous, which makes them cringe and they can't hold that pressure inside of them so it comes out in these uncalibrated ways. 
So a secret weapon can be overcoming the fear of rejection, overcoming the fear of approaching a stranger, doing it, and then being able to hold the pressure with that sexy girl you just approached in the conversation. It's, it's a total game changer. Now, being able to hold pressure goes way beyond just meeting strangers, meeting women, and you know, striking up a conversation. It is crucial, short-term and long-term, for every man to portray stoic behavior. To be able to hold your frame, to stay grounded, especially when things don't go your way. There will always be situations where, you know, you're surprised. Shit goes south. Maybe your girl has a freak out. You have an accident. You miss your bus. You miss your flight. Something happens. And you have to be the grounded one. You have to be the rock. Otherwise, if you lose your shit, if you get nervous, if you suddenly ask her for her opinion, opinion is fine, but like for her for direction or leadership, she will instantly lose trust in you and just downgrade you uh, in terms of like, is this a man or is he a boy? Can he lead me? Can he take care of me? Or do I have to take care of him? Number three is dominance. Basically, women expect you to make the move. And that means initially approaching them, saying hi to them, giving them a direct compliment so they know why you're here. You know, not some random thing or asking for direction or some comment about her dog or her shoes or her bag. I mean, that's okay to start out with, you know, to becoming more social. But eventually you want to transition into the kind of guy who just says how it is, you know, who just gives a compliment because he actually thinks that about her and he's able to directly look in her eyes and say that thing. Okay, that's one form of dominance. Obviously, we need to be calibrated. There is one part that is boldness. It's like to go for it, to try, to do it. And there's the other part, which is empathy, to check in with her, to see what effect did our words have on her? How is she reacting? Is she upset? Is she happy? Did we cross any boundary? Or are we close to a boundary? Should we pull back a bit? And you need a good level of both. You need to be bold and you need to have also a high level of empathy. So this goes further into the dating you know, process. You need to be able to approach her, then on a date, lean into her, touch her, escalate, make her comfortable with her touch, go for the kiss, being able to whisper in her ear, being able to take her to the bedroom, being able to her well. And that is also a really important point. In my experience, more than 90% of women want to be dominated in bed. They want to be taken. They want to feel free. They want to let go. And it kind of makes sense. If you're a woman and you, you know, see yourself as very feminine in your feminine essence, then you are usually, especially in the bedroom where the polarity should be strong, you are attracted to a dominant man, a man who is in his masculine, who tells you what to do, who is able to take you, to dominate you. And... To be honest, if she can't get that from you long term, and I'm talking about sex here, she will get that feeling somewhere else because it, it is crucial to her. It is crucial to her happiness to being f well. And number four is leadership. Again, in the dating context, that means, first of all, telling her she's beautiful. Again, it always comes down to that, right? And you're very beautiful, both of you, but you're like my type. <laughs> Blonde and brunette. I see you on phone, but you look so cute. I think uh, we have a future, at least a short one. And you looked at me and I'm like, oh my God. A guy is making the moves. A guy is leading, a guy is telling what's coming up and he's showing the way, right? That's more in the dating process and we need a certain balance. We need empathy and we need boldness. We need the boldness to make a move, to suggest something, to move forward, to tell her what to do, to tell her where it's going. And then we need empathy to check in with her. That's all right. If maybe we cross the boundary, maybe we're close to a breaking point and then being able to pull back. Practically on a date, that can mean you decide where to go, where to sit, maybe even what to order, when to move to the next location, when to take her home, when to take her to the bedroom, and so on. Basically, you are the man. You're expected to make all of these moves, to make these decisions, to at least suggest something and not let it up to her. And then, sure, have the empathy to know, okay, she's not ready, she's not comfortable, plans changed, weather changed, let's find something new and you're also able to adapt in that sense. You need to be in your masculine in that sense. You need to be able to make decisions, to make decisions fast, and not only make the decision, but also stand by your decision. Of course, again, we talked about empathy and boldness, and, and if the decision you make boldly 
is just totally against her needs and you realize, okay, you should be able to change. But what I mean by, you know, s sticking to your decision is like, don't let other circumstances constantly make you flip flop. Think about it. You are in your stoic self. You think clearly, okay, what is the best for the group? You are a leader and the leader's job is to make sure his tribe, you know, benefits from his leadership. So you make a decision based on that and then you stick by it because that's why you made that decision in the first place. You need to be the grounded. You need to be stable. You need to be the rock because if you are flip-flopping, if you're not sure of yourself, if you don't know where it's going, how would she ever be able to trust you? How would she ever see you as her man, as her king, as a leader and, you know, being able to bathe in that and being able to flourish with her femininity and give you that gift that she has? Very easy to lose attraction of a beautiful woman in seconds if you lack the quality of leadership. So these were four of many high value traits. Of course, there is more and I'm happy to read about it in the comments. What is your dating experience? What have you observed that women maybe say that gets them attracted to a man and what them actually got them attracted to a man? I'm sure uh, there's different opinions out there and I'm happy to hear about it. If you want to really take your dating life serious, I do offer free coaching consultations. You find the link below. I'm limiting it to two per day because obviously they take energy and I want to really help guys. Other than that, as always, thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to hear more of and I see you in the next video. Bye.